Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Truth Ear Hexa. This one, I'm told, is popular. So we're going to check it out. Wait. It's, it's rattling. <laughs> Should I be worried? Now, I recently did a video on the Truth Ear Zero, which was a collab between this brand and Critical, and that was essentially a $50 in-ear monitor that was tuned to match Harman. I've decided to go full Harman. And a lot of people claim that it is objective perfection. For me, I actually preferred the other Zero, the one from Sal Notes, which is here. I preferred this one because the tuning of this Zero was not as aggressive in the upper mid-range. So I'm very curious to see how the Hexa does. This is a hybrid in-ear monitor with one dynamic driver and three balanced armatures, and it comes in right at around $80. So what we're gonna do in this video is do a quick unboxing, give it a listen, then give it a measure, and then I'm gonna let you know whether or not I think it's any good. Before diving in, just a quick disclaimer, this was sent over by Shenzhen Audio, so big thanks to Shenzhen Audio for sending it along for evaluation. But of course, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this headphone, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive into the Truth Gear Hexa. So I'm gonna take it out of the plastic packaging here. Um, actually, I like the packaging because they have the frequency response on the back. Of course, they have the cartoon child on the front, which I'm, you know, led to believe is a popular trend these days. I have no commentary on that. Get it out of the plastic packaging. Hexa unboxing time. Off you go. Uh, and then wonderful, wonderful black uh, packaging. Oh, all right. You get another cartoon anime child on the front. Uh, very cool. Interesting. This is a shell design that I have not seen before. It's closer to what I've seen from Symphonium with that sort of angular kind of design, like the Symphonium Meteor. And it's actually a similar size to the Meteor as well. Meteor is a much more expensive IM, but um, I think it looks badass. I'm just going to say it. I, I think this is dope. Oh, and you have the name here on the bottom. Thank you. Somebody made an IEM that speaks to, you know, my aesthetic preferences. It's actually a dead exterior to match my dead inside uh, personality. You get the little packaging pouch. Yeah, pretty no-nonsense kind of cable here. There's nothing really to comment on it. And then you get a whole bunch of tips. Okay, let's pop them in, give them a listen. It's tough to really say out the gate what the comfort is gonna be like over long-term um, long term listening. But at the moment, this feels totally fine. It doesn't feel like it's too thick of a nozzle. There's nothing that really sticks into part of my ear in an uncomfortable manner. It's totally fine. So despite the somewhat angular shell design, uh, the inside is, you know, sufficiently contoured. I think for the most part, this is, this is solid for comfort. Let's give it a listen. What? This is outstanding. Very few things shock me these days with how good they are, uh, you know, for the sound quality at whatever price points. This is one of them. I mean, the, the Zero has stronger bass, but this has better, just a much better balance for everything um, for my ear canal. Let me keep listening here. Wow. All right, so yeah, for that track, for electronic music, or at least the track I'm listening to, the treble is definitely a little bit hot on the hexa like mid treble and upper treble but it's it sounds like it's just a little boosted like not not a ton of like harmonic imbalances going on here or anything like that it just sounds like the treble is a little extra crispy and a little bit extra forward i'm gonna say mid treble and above uh just you know subjectively with this track um but everything else is really right on point i think this would almost this would be even better i think if it had just a little bit more bass to kind of balance out that treble kind of sparkle that it has. Um, man, other than that though, this is really solid. Okay, let me let me keep listening. I'm sorry, I'm sucked into the into the vortex now. I'm gonna play a track where I'm gonna listen for some some shout. Just to just to double check here. Um it's it's a bit, just a little bit fatiguing there for the treble but everything else is really well balanced with this one. I'm very surprised and impressed. This is so much better than the Zero. At least for my ear canal, Truth Ear made something for me. They're like you specifically, your ear canal. So what I'm gonna show you guys here is the measurement of the Truth Ear Hexa. 
done on the Gross RIO402 coupler. So this doesn't have the coupler resonance peak that you might see with uh, other couplers out there, the AliExpress ones. So just keep that in mind that you can't compare the official Gross one with the, the other ones that are out there because it's different in the treble. So you can see here that unsurprisingly relative to my neutral reference point IEM, which is the Theodio Oracle Mark I, the truth your hexa is pretty close to that. Uh, the ear gain level is like right on the money. It's right at around the same amount. There's a little bit of a difference there and it's that the lower treble is actually less on the hexa. I think that's one of the areas where you might want a dip to be. Uh, and then the mid and upper treble is a little bit more forward on the hexa than it is on my reference point and that's kind of what I was picking up on and it causes a little hint of you know that extra sparkle spice but it's not harmonically imbalanced right it doesn't have lower harmonics boosted over upper ones you can think of this as just having really good treble extension that's just a little bit tilted upwards but man is it ever nice there may be people who want just a little bit more bass like sub bass mid bass but yeah I think this is unbelievably good for the price. So, okay, that's the frequency response and the tonality and some impressions here. Uh, how is the technical performance? How's the, the, the resolution, the subjective stuff that is harder to find in frequency response? Notice the wording? It's very good. <laughs> there's no blunting, there's no, it sounds, you know, incisive. Images are well-defined and distinguished from one another. But I'm just gonna say it, this is my new benchmark in your monitor under $100, easily. So yeah, uh, my conclusion is I'm kind of blown away by how good this is. That's basically all I can say. Solid recommendation for me. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.